Okay, my name is Judy Siebert Mazels, and I'm the engineering librarian as well as the web administrator for the libraries. And I'm going to talk about two uh, different programs today. One is Turnitin for uh, students who want to run their theses and dissertations through a uh, plagiarism check service, which is actually available for every class on campus that's run through Blackboard or Canvas. The other thing I'm going to talk about is a plug-in, mostly for the Firefox browser called um, Libex. And the beauty of Libex is that it will connect any browser window that you are on. Like if you're on an article or a paper and you're looking at a bibliography, you can check to see if those papers in the bibliography are held by the libraries, even if you're not connected at that time. So you might want to hang around for that. Anyway, um, how original is your thesis? Go on here. First of all, uh, you can find the Plagiarism Check Services page through the, the web page for the libraries. It's under services for, in this case, it would be services for graduate students. And Plagiarism Check is one of the first things you'll see there. And I've got the URL here. I keep just thinking I can click this. Um, for it to work, you have to be enrolled in a master's or doctoral thesis program. Usually they're like 880 or 890, although some engineering classes I've seen 893. So they can be a bit off in this numbering. What you do is, first of all, you need proof of enrollment. So we ask you to log into MyZoo, create a screenshot of your enrollment and then save it to your desktop. You use the copy function then to pick up the department name, the course number, and then the course name. And you're going to paste this into a form. Once you've made your screenshot, you're going to revisit the plagiarism check services page, which you get to through the graduate student page. And you're going to scroll down to request the thesis check service. Am I going too fast? Then you're going to click on the request form, which takes you to this form here. It looks like this. And you enter your name, last name first, first name, your Mizzou email. And then you're going to cut and paste that course, uh, the, your department name, your course number, and then the course name into this field here. And here is where you're going to upload your screenshot that verifies that you are enrolled in the class. The last thing you have to do is check this note box in order that we can send you a confirmation email. And this is uh, sort of what the receipt will look like from the system. This is just an automatic form. It says your request has been submitted, and we have your proof of enrollment. Nothing's happened at that point. You just know that. You've been, your request has been received. Then a librarian should contact you and say that uh, he or she has received your request. And as soon as they add you to the database, they will send you an email. If you haven't heard from anybody, go to the main page and look for contact information. There's an ask a question or there's contact the libraries in the lower in the lower left. After you are added to the Turnitin database, you'll get a email from the librarian. What you're going to do at that point is you're going to log into Blackboard, courses.missouri.edu, and go to my organizations. And on the left side under My Organizations, you're going to select 
MU Libraries Thesis Plagiarism Check. Again, you have a series of things in a menu, and what you want in this case is thesis submission. After you click on thesis submission, it will come up with yet another URL link, and it says view assignment. Okay, at this point, you are going to click on the Submit button. And it's going to come back with a form. You want to make sure your name is there. Put in the title of your thesis. You're going to select Part 1. It comes with five parts, and that will allow you to submit multiple times if you keep revising it. Then you're going to choose your file. And you're going to navigate to your desktop or laptop and pull up your thesis, choose it, and then upload it. Then you're going to click this Notice button that it's your own work. Okay. Then you submit. And this just shows how you can upload from your desktop. And this is an example how it all looks like when it's filled out. Just submit. You can submit your thesis for review more than once. You have to use the same submission title. The second time you submit it, you'll select part two, the third time, part three, etc. You'll get a notice from Turnitin saying that you successfully submitted your assignment, in this case the thesis. And submissions are processed at a rate of about 10 pages per minute. Oops. You can wait for it to process or you can log off or return later to Blackboard. When you return, to see the results, you're going to go to this submissions inbox and hit submit. And then you will see, you check your name, check the title of the thesis. If it says pending, you might want to refresh it so that it actually comes up with the final results. So here's the refresh button. I've refreshed it, and it did come up uh, with, in this case, a 59% similarity. I think I put up some meeting minutes on this. So hopefully yours won't be quite so high. Um, you just click on the title, or you can click on the percent to see your originality report. At this point, this is kind of what you're going to have to do next. You're going to have to click on the Originality button in the top left. You want to print out a copy of the report in PDF. So what you're going to do next is look for this Print button in the lower left. And you're going to select the first option, which is Download the PDF. And paragraphs that are similar to other uh, files found on the web or even uh, commercial databases will show up at this point. So the Turnitin course will run from the beginning of, the, of a semester to the day before the beginning of the following semester. So it's going to be well beyond 16 weeks. And students will be automatically removed at the end of the course. And that's pretty much it. Are there any questions about it? Okay, 
Were there were there were no questions. I can't see, so I don't know. Well, you know, I really don't know that, but I, you know, it kind of depends on how you set up set it up, and you would need to talk to ET at Mo about what's advisable. I think we used a pretty loose um, regimen for this, so we said that any phrase under I don't know, seven words to exclude. We also excluded the bibliography and some other things to be considered um, because you don't want to catch like, you know, cliches and all of that. That kind of will, would exclude those if you keep your phrase count fairly high. I did have a professor called me up that says, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm submitting a paper and it overlaps with this student's thesis and the thesis keeps popping up. So he thought maybe under 20% was acceptable, you know. Um, I, I really don't know what is an acceptable amount, but I'm sure the people at ET at Mo will know, and I'll, I'll find out, and actually I can email everybody if you'd like that. And they added, uh, it's heard less than 30% is okay, generally speaking. Oh, that sounds good. Okay. <laughs> that would be for typical undergraduates. Okay, that sounds reasonable. So thank you very much. All right, uh, any other questions about it? Again, you can turn this on in your Blackboard program. There are a lot of features which uh, I think are um, encased in jargon and it's hard to know what they exactly cover. So you probably do want to talk to um, ET at Mo if you're just going to set up turn it in on your own page because I walked through uh, this uh, form with Guy Wilson setting it up for the thesis and he helped me decode quite a few things. Okay. Um, will it work in Canvas? Uh, yes, it will. We, I haven't set up um, Turnitin for the thesis program in Canvas, but I know that, that Turnitin is available in Canvas. Yes, anytime. There it is. Hey, um, Judy. Um, this is yes. Lynn and Ann. Yes, hi. Hmm. Um, so we're faculty and we're going to be grading students using Turnitin. And I'm sure okay. that's a much different process than graduate students in their thesis. So it, it is. So when students use this, they they turn it in and they they do turn it in. And they can see what what percent themselves they're they're getting right. Actually, I think you have control over what they can oh. see. Okay. Uh, if you want them to see it, I think you can let them see it, or you know, you can elect not to. That's what I'm saying. That there are a lot of options that are available behind the scenes. Um, I suppose I could bring up the the actual program, but I don't know what they all mean. They need to adjust their audio. So oh, okay. Can. Excuse me, we have to adjust the audio. Hello, people. Um, okay, so I need to. Oh. All right, and we're back. Sorry about All that. Right. Wait, now, a second. can I go right on the web to show them something from Turnitin or not, rather than going to the PowerPoint? Uh, you can go right on the web. Um, the share to Firefox. Yeah, so I say start sharing. Mm -hmm. And Firefox isn't there, so. So I have to pull it up. Okay. And go back to collaborate. And there it is. Okay. All right. So let's 
to like it. Alright. This is kind of what it looks like um, from the instructor's point of view. In this case, somebody submitted something and they had a 7% overlap. Um, if I wanted to modify the form, can you all see this? It's, you know, I gave it an assignment name, um, a description, your submission method can be file upload, text submission, overall grade. I don't know what that is. Do not exclude small matches. This is where you get, you can exclude by word count, by percentage. You can exclude bibliographic material. And you would probably want to exclude quoted material. I didn't do anything with translated matching or this grammar check. In this case, we don't keep a repository because we don't uh, want these theses to be added to the Turnitin database. That's uh, a decision you have to make as well. You can check stored student papers. You can check the internet. You can check journals and publications. You can reveal the grade immediately. You can ignore grades. You can use grade mark. I really don't know what these mean. Um, then Guy told me to use this immediately, first report is final. You can say reports can be overwritten till due date. And I guess if that's if they're submitting several versions of the same paper. And then here is students can view originality reports, no yes. And your grading schema is here and allow late submissions. So you see there's quite a few features. Uh, again, ET at Mo would know best. Are your, you probably have a liaison person over at Health Sciences that you could work with that could help you figure out how you wanted to fill out this form. Does that help? Yes, that, that was helpful. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Now, uh, for those of you who didn't sign up for LiveX, but you really want to turn it in, you really have to use <laughs> this uh, service. I think it's quite wonderful myself. I created a, uh, a you know, LiveX is a plugin that was created by a computer scientist at Virginia Tech, one of the faculty there, in collaboration with the libraries. And it's, it's a plugin that you install in your browser. It works best with Firefox. And uh, basically, it, it's a way to avoid, you know, in some cases, going to the library home page. You, can, you get direct access to library resources while you're doing research on the web, that's what it says. So there's two ways you can, minor issue? Oh, OK. Oh, it's not sharing, OK. And show. So let me go here. Let me go here. Oh, okay. Sorry, folks, I wasn't sharing. Choose what I share. Did that do it? No. Okay. Up in yellow. Stop. Okay. Then I need to go here, and then I need to go here. Then I need to go here. It doesn't. Okay. Well, you know, I could I could just go. Well, I need my I need my slide. Um, oh, okay. Oh, 
Hamilton. Did I go too fast? Okay. Okay. Now we're here. Okay, there's two ways you can get to uh, the LiveX plugin. There's a direct link, and the URL is libraryguides.missouri.edu slash LiveX. Or you can go through the main library gateway in the lower right and go to apps and tools. So the first thing you want to do is install LiveX. And there's a generic plugin. So you're going to go to that page and you're going to select, you're going to install LiveX plugin. I'm going to have to go to the web for this. Can I do that? Can I stop this? Go to the web. Start sharing it. Okay. So let's go here. We're going to go to Apps and Tools. Then we'll go, i got to go slow, that's right. The LiveX plugin. All right. So at this point, you see you can install the Firefox Generic Edition or Chrome. And if you can, I would suggest Firefox. You can see I have the LiveX button right here. And I'll just show you before I go back to the slideshow what it does. So you click on it and it comes with a pop-up. And it tells you, in this case, what you're searching. So I can search the Merlin catalog from here. I can search Summon. I can look for a specific book. I can search for journal titles, Google Scholar, Google, Google Books, Libraries of the World. Now that's nice, but let's say you're not interested in those databases, perhaps. So you might want to change your edition. And I'm going kind of out of order here, but let's do this. So you notice I have quite a few editions. Here's one for health sciences. I don't know how many health sciences people are here, but I could just load this edition. And you can see that the databases do change. There's PubMed, Medline, CINAHL, Scopus, Journal Titles. So, I could look for something like, uh, what is it? And it automatically will search that database just from here. So it, it's, it's a very nice feature. But I'm going to go back to my generic one. University of Missouri. I did make a lot of these, perhaps too many, but that's how it works. All right, let's go back here. So I just showed you how that kind of worked. And here's all the subjects that I have, uh, biochemistry, business, education, engineering. I made one for electrical engineering, fisheries, math, social work, journalism. Oh, oh, it lost its reset. Oh, this is Collaborate. Stop. Stop. As you can tell, this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, now I go to start sharing, and then I go to PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So, so here are the subject areas: biochemistry. As I said, business, as you can see them all. If anybody wants a LiveX toolbar for this subject and you don't see it here, I can at attempt to make a new one. And I showed you how to change um, your subject area here in changing the edition. And we've seen this, so I'll scoot. Now, the next thing you would want to look at as far as setting up the toolbar is the preferences. And that can get quite complicated. Um, you need to go, after you select preferences, to the context menu. And this is where you click on right click, and it brings up all these options that you can search. And I tend to prefer fewer than more. And I will select just one of these from each of them. 
So click on that. Don't select all these other options. Or you, you will be overwhelmed with options, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Libex works great with online bibliographies. You can right-click for a menu of search options. You have to be in a web browser. It'll work with PDFs in Firefox that are newer that you can highlight in a web browser. And having something in Google Scholar really uh, makes it work really well. So here's an example, and this is where I'm going to have to switch back again out into the web. Let me go back. How do I go back here? So can I, what happens if I click on this? Well, let's see what, maybe nothing. Um, nothing it looks like. Let's see. Nothing. Okay. So let's see if that's in the browser. Otherwise, this isn't going to work very well. No, it isn't. It's kind of too bad. Okay. Well, I'll try that. It, it doesn't seem to let me do that. Oh, click on the slideshow. Okay. And slideshow. Click here. Click there. Can they still see this? Okay. Okay. And they are seeing this. All right. So here's an example of how it works. I am in this database that we own, but you cannot tell whether or not we have this article. Here's a journal. What you can do is just select the title, and you right click, and you see all these options? All these options come from Flybex. So what I tend to do is if it's an article, I will look for it in Summon. So someone pulls up that article, you can click on this, and you are right in, into the article, which is, which is really, really very nice. Then I'm going to pick up this, which you cannot see. This is an, another example. All right. So here is an article, which is rather lengthy, it's 20 pages, and it's got a lot of um, citations that follow it. So if you uh, have Libex installed, you can right click on an entire citation, and um, if it doesn't work, I just suggest you keep backing off, like maybe not put in the page pages. So it didn't get it up here, but it said, did you mean this? Well, this is the article. So you can see how, how nice this is in that here is a PDF that is totally not linked at all. And with the introduction of this Libex plugin, you can search any of these articles easily on our databases. You can look for a specific uh, journal. If you just want to know about that journal, you can look for this title. If it's a book, you can look for the book. Um, it's really, really very nice. So the next thing I wanted to show you, I showed you how the PDF worked. Um, that is, we'll do this one next. And I'm just going to have to keep you on the web. Okay. What is it missing? Okay. Redirect safe. I don't know if that worked earlier. It is not working right now. Okay, that's too bad. Proxy first one. Oh, I know. Let me try this since I'm on campus. Okay, so 
Here's an example of an article. And you'll see that there are quite a few books. Here, what all you have to do is highlight a book title, right click, and see if it's in Merlin. In this case, we don't own it. Now, I have an example that we do own, so I've got to find that example. Search for Great War and Women's Consciousness. Okay, let's go back and search for Great War and Women's Consciousness. So here's a book I happen to know we own. So I'm going to right click, search it in Merlin. And we don't have it, but it is at UNSL, so you can click on that and you can request it. So that's how it works with books, which is very nice. Then, um, those are just kind of the same thing. It will also work with Wikipedia in that you can locate any subject, any um, reference, right click and see if you can find it. Now I'm going to uh, switch over to something else, and that is the use of Fibex with Amazon or Barnes & Noble. So here we find this book. You, if you bring up a single copy of a book in Amazon or Barnes & Noble, and you have the Libex plugin installed, it will show up with a little icon. And it says search, uh, the pop-up is search catalog for this ISBN. So you click on that, and it pulls up two versions. One is a hardback, and probably the other is a paperback. Click on that. And it says request that the library order this book. So you click on this, fill out your paw print, and you can request that we buy it. And that's just all seamless with this plug-in. Another thing you can do, let me look at this auto-linking feature. And if you're in a database that has ISBNs, like in this particular case, Real Poverty and Risk, if you were in IE and you didn't have, or if you didn't have Libex installed, you would not see this highlighted. But it tells you what it refers to. You, what it refers to, you click on it, and it brings up the book. It's not checked out. If it didn't bring up it, you could try one of these other ISBNs on the side. Sometimes those can be quite lengthy because there are different editions of a book. There are different formats. In any case. Um, I'm sorry this didn't work out as well as I thought. I only have one more thing to show you, and that is, you, let's say you are off campus and you found the, uh, the perfect article that you, you wanted, you know. Here you are and you're off campus. What you can do is you would right click and you go down and see here it says reload the page via, via easy proxy. So you reload. And it will, in this case, since I'm on campus, this doesn't work. But if you're off campus and you reload, it will prompt you for your paw print and your password. And it will take you right into the library's collection without you having to go into the library, search for the article, go through the proxy server. It just automatically takes you into the library's collection via the proxy server. So are there, are there any questions about this? I'm sorry, this uh, PowerPoint, you know, I've never done this before, and the PowerPoint didn't exactly work the way that I thought it would using Blackboard sort of uncollaborate, I guess, in this case. So any questions? Oh, there was one in the room that I had. It might have done from a while ago. Oh, okay. Um, someone asked in, if they're nursing, would they choose the health sciences? I would think so. It's got CINAHL, it has Medline, it has PubMed. Um, is there anything missing? 
from that. I might look into it. I possibly could add it, but. Any other questions? Pardon me? I said I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Well, um, oh. Okay. Well, if you ha if you try to install the LiveX toolbar and you have any problems, uh, please just give me a call. I've been using this for, I don't know, 10 years now, maybe eight. And I find it's, it's a great time saver. Um, Personally, okay. We have one question coming in. Okay. Well, uh, again, my name's Judy Siebert Maisel. My email address is m a s e l e s j at missouri.edu, and my phone number is five seven three eight eight two two seven one five. So, just let me know. I um, hope people are interested in trying them out. Thank you.